Good afternoon friends, it's Sunday morning here in Lisburn. It's just gone 20 past 10. It is the 9th of June and I have to confess it's absolutely freezing. Put on the winter suit again just to try to stay warm. I don't know about global warming but it's definitely not getting warmer here in Lisburn in the middle of the summer. But there you have it, it's the Lord's Day morning and I was just thinking about a verse of scripture, Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number 13. It says in that verse, call the Sabbath a delight. Call the Sabbath a delight. It speaks as well about refraining from your own pursuits, your own pleasures on the Sabbath and call the Sabbath a delight. We are living in a day and generation where for many there is no such thing as a day of rest. That's what the word Sabbath means. Some people have the idea that the word Sabbath means seventh, but it actually means rest. And every single one of us need in this world a day of rest, a day of physical rest, a day of mental rest, and also a day that typifies spiritual rest. Some people trace the Sabbath day back to Exodus chapter 20 and they say that's whenever the Sabbath was initiated and instituted. Exodus 20 is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God. That speaks of their authority. And they were written in tables of stone. That speaks of their permanence. And the Ten Commandments summarize not so much the civil law or the ceremonial law, which have been done away with in Christ, but the Ten Commandments summarize the moral law of God, which is unchanging, written by the finger of God on tables of stone. And the fourth commandment simply says not to keep a Sabbath, but to remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the day of rest to keep it holy, to keep it sanctified, to keep it set apart, to keep it distinct. The word holy means to be set apart for a sacred use or purpose. And the Bible says that the Christian is to remember the Sabbath day, to remember a day already in existence, because the Sabbath, the day of rest, was a creation ordinance. The Lord labored for six days, if we can use the word labored, in creating the world and all that is within it. And then on the seventh day, he rested. He took a day of rest and it's good for us to have a day of rest whenever the lord jesus was on this earth he said that the son of man did not come to destroy the law but to fulfill and the moral law of god still stands not as a means for salvation or a means of justification the law shows us our sin and our inability to uh, keep the law in the flesh but the law of God does reveal the things that are pleasing and desirable and acceptable in the sight of the Lord. And so I'm convinced that the day of rest, a Lord's day, still stands in this age that we are living in. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said that man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So it's not a slavish, legalistic thing, but the Sabbath was made for man, not just for the Jew, not just for Israel, but the Sabbath was made for man, for mankind. In the New Testament, we don't maybe use the name Sabbath or the word Sabbath all that often, but the Word of God certainly places distinction upon the first day of the week for the Church of Jesus Christ. John, for example, said in the book of Revelation that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, a day set apart for the worship of the Lord. So there is still very much a thing as the Lord's day. Jesus Christ rose on the first day of the week. The Spirit of God was sent at Pentecost on the first day of the week. The disciples met together on the first day of the week in the morning and again in the evening. They broke bread on the first day of the week. And they also brought their thank offerings before the Lord on the first day of the week. It speaks of newness. It speaks of spiritual rest. It speaks of a finished work. It speaks of one who has created all things new. 
And the book of Isaiah 50, it says, call this day of rest, call it a delight. I think for years, many well-meaning Christians have viewed the Sabbath day in a slavish, legalistic way. And there are things that are prohibited in the word of God on the Lord's day. Things that we should abstain from for our own physical, mental and spiritual health and well-being, but primarily for the glory of the Lord. And yet we should call the Sabbath a delight. Anytime we try to obey God, and it's not out of a right heart attitude, a spirit of delight, praise and worship, it just becomes legalistic, slavish bondage. For example, if I am coming to the Lord's house, I don't enjoy it. I feel I have to come. I'm not really doing it with a right heart attitude. And I don't believe that glorifies God because man's chief aim is to what? Glorify God and enjoy him forever. So we should enjoy God and glorify him by enjoying him. And how do we glorify him? We do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in his sight and honoring the Lord, honoring his name, his character, his being, his day, his house, his people, his word, the place of prayer. All of these things serve to glorify God, but we need to enjoy them. And if we don't enjoy them, maybe it shows something wrong within our hearts. Ezekiel chapter 36, with this we finish, God says that whenever he puts a new heart in an individual, takes away the stony heart out of their flesh, puts a new heart in them, a heart of flesh, and he will cause them to walk in his statutes and do them. That's why the Apostle Paul could say, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Evidence of being born again, of being regenerated, of being a new creature in Christ, of having a new heart, is having a delight to do the things that God asks us to do. Not to try to sanctify or justify ourselves, but to please him. And in pleasing him, there is great reward. Something for you to think about. Read that chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. Isaiah 58, call the Sabbath a delight. Friends, we'll see you again very soon.